Hey guys, what's up? This is Clash of the Titans. This came out a little bit like in the early 1980s or around that time, right? And so basically this is a mythology movie. It's not a um, an original story. It's not like written by some brilliant writer, even though it's a great story, it's a great movie. It's a great story, but it's not written by a great writer, a modern writer at least, right? And it's it's just basically it's a mythology story. Like let's take a mythology story. It's already there, and we're gonna make a movie out of it. Like Medusa, even though she's a cool character, that her gaze turns people into stone. She's not an original character. She was, you know, she goes back into folklore. Like I think that Medu yeah, Medusa goes back into Greek mythology, folklore. This stuff goes really really back in time, where. Um, you know, people started making movies and stories out of stories that were already existing. And they just, a lot of these stories, they put some spin on it and other stories, they just left it the same. They just left it how it was. And for example, like even the modern stories, there was 300, which was not exactly a mythology story, but it was a story about ancient Greece. And it was partly mythology because it was what we know about what was going on back then and in the Battle of Sparta and all those, that goes back to mythology. Um, there's a lot of stories, like even modern, the, the character Thor, who's a superhero, that goes into Viking mythology, Norse mythology, and the whole pantheon of Thor, like even the modern Thor movies goes back to mythology. And what they did with the Thor movies was they created some storyline, but basically they took the characters that were already done, characters that were already existing, uh, and basically from mythology, and they basically put it into a movie. And this is an interesting thing to do. I think in the case of Clash of the Titans, it really worked, and I think it really does work. It seems to work over and over again. And um, this is really like a great thing to do because it really tells these stories in a new way to a modern audience. You know, kids will probably, unless they're taking a, a class about mythology, they're never gonna read that stuff, you know? Or they're never gonna read that stuff when they're young, right? They might read that stuff later in high school or college, right? But kids are not gonna read um, the, the tales of Ulysses or something like that, you know? They're not gonna read that, not gonna have any access to it, but they will read, they will watch Clash of the Titans. They will watch, you know, Spartans warring with another Greek faction. They will watch, you know, Hercules and the legendary journeys. And that's another one. It's like they just took Hercules, the story right out of mythology. And not only the main character Hercules, but they took um, all the other surrounding characters from the Hercules pantheon, all the ancient Greek gods, Mars, Ares, all these guys from ancient Greece, ancient Roman mythology, and um, they made a series out of it. And Xena was the same thing. Xena was also, it's a female Hercules. It's sort of like the Red Sonia is the female Conan the Barbarian, you know? And then even Conan was, was taken from, it's basically a, a retelling of history. It's a retelling of not something that, that necessarily happened in history where barbarians existed in history, but um, it's more of, of like, it's that Hercules character, you know? It, it's Hercules was basically the first superhero, you know? And all of these like half God, half man people, they were kind of superheroes, you know? They were not gods, because gods were not, they're like above superheroes, um, but they're kind of like half God, half man, sort of like Hercules was. And so um, you would have a lot of these movies coming out like Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, you would have um, all of these like crazy, like um, like Aladdin's Magic Lamp come out. And then even like the story, well, they have the movie Excalibur, which is based on the ancient Merlin story, the ancient King Arthur story. And Excalibur was the sword that basically picked King Arthur or picked that, or picked Arthur to be a king when he was just a scribe. He was just like assisting a knight. Uh, maybe he was gonna be a knight himself one day, but he happened to walk by a sword and a stone 
and decided, hey, there's a sword and a stone. Let's see if I pull it out. And like everyone tried pulling it out and they couldn't because whoever pulls out the sword from the stone becomes king of all of Britain, all of England, the whole area. At the time, it was very, very chaotic and there was a lot of different factions and stuff like that. And so um, one person wanted to unite the whole kingdom and that was King Arthur. And it's interesting because like if you look at um, Lord of the Rings, it says something like the ring says, one ring to rule them all, one ring to guide them, or something like that, one ring to find them, or something like that. But it's one ring to rule them all, basically, and one ring to, to bind them, and uh, one ring, something else, and then the darkness bind them, or something like that, right? But basically, the ring was Excalibur. You know, the ring was the same thing. It was Excalibur, because Excalibur was one sword to rule them all, and one sword to bind them, you know? So basically he would take all of these, these crazy uh, chaotic factions, all of these different warring tribes that were like happening in England at the time, and you know, in that continent, in that, in that land, and he united them all. He united them all, he created uh, the Knights of the Round Table, he created a lot of, you know, he did what's right. He based, the, he based a kingdom on what was right, as opposed to what was wrong. It was it was good against evil. You know, he was able to maintain his, um, you know, his, his viewpoint of what was right and what was wrong, even when he gained power, right? Which was a lot of people, even like democratic governments, you know, like they'll, they'll, they'll take power and then the power just messes them up. It, it, it just ruins them. You know, they take power and then all of a sudden they take bribes and then, you know, it's like, and then they do favors that they shouldn't be doing for people they shouldn't be doing it for. They get like talked into doing the wrong thing all the time because there's lots of um, people influence that want to like influence like kings or people in politics to do what they want them to do, you know, to create a puppet government. And so King Arthur would have none of, none of that. You know, he was just like, I'm doing the right thing. My, my knights of the round table are doing the right thing. And um, we've got magic on our side, we have Merlin on our side. And then there was the whole other people in that story that were just evil. And it's a story of good against evil. And I think that uh, mythology seems to be that kind of story. It seems to be a story of good against evil. Same thing with uh, Clash of the Titans, it was good against evil. You know, there were monsters, there were titans, there were people to be saved. And they had to, and the whole journey was to, you know, slay Medusa, take her head, and then to turn the Titan into stone um, because that was the only thing that was gonna defeat him. Otherwise he would just destroy everything. Titan was like a big, um, like King Kong or a big Godzilla basically, you know, where the Titan would just destroy the whole freaking city. You know, and, and the only thing that would stop a Titan, like you couldn't come across a Titan, especially with the weapons that they had back then, which was like swords. You know, a sword couldn't come across a giant Titan, right? A sword or like a, um, um, a bow and arrow, like that's all they had. They had swords, bows and arrows. They didn't have like much firepower, you know, against a Titan. They didn't have like cannons or bombs or like missiles or anything like that. And so, but they did have Medusa's head and then they did magic. They had magic and they were able to like, with magic, uh, cure, it's to, to, to overthrow the evil or the danger that was gonna like cause all kinds of like misfortune in the land. And what's interesting is that around the same time, the Clash of the Titans came out. It's like a lot of these, uh, these basically these um, ancient, um, the, the, these mythology stories came out and they came out like they're still coming out now i mean all of the the, the four superhero stories are mythology um even though they even took the wonder woman story and they created that uh, a mythology where i don't know if it's actually myth but the whole like it was a tale it's like a folk tale or a, a story that was already existing you know like basically she's for she's an amazon and amazons were these uh, warrior women, right? They were just like a tribe of warrior women and they were Amazons. They were badass, you know, but that's what they did. They, they created um, Wonder Woman and she was an Amazon. So they, they, they were basically taking stories out of history 
out of mythology, out of something that was already happening, and they created a modern story with it. Um, they did that. They did that a lot with a lot of fantasy and a lot of stories. They did that with Hercules, and you know, e even like recent movies and recent stories have all been like based on ancient mythology and um, ancient uh, ancient stories. You know, and it all started with you know Harryhausen. Uh, Ray Harryhausen did the effects in this movie and he did all of the creatures and stuff like that and I think that's one of, one of the appeal of these stories is when you like make cool creatures like that people go to see it and this is a kids movie I mean this is like you could watch like you could be any age to watch this but basically um it's cool it's, it's, he's riding a he's riding a pegasus a flying horse um there's monsters it's just a kids movie like I, I don't you know it's either a kids movie or a movie that only like people that like fantasy genre movies like. And so they've been taking like this fantasy genre kind of like thing and instead of creating a, uh, an original story, they will just take like stories from myth and they would just like put these movies together. And um, it's interesting because like they're, they've been doing this with pretty much every single pantheon, you know, from ancient Greece, uh, to Vikings, you know, like every, there's a lot of uh, stories that are basically, you know, modern, 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 like fantasy, but they're based on Viking stories, like Valhalla, the, that whole idea, the idea of um, Valkyries, the idea of um, Ragnarok, all of these things were, you know, these are elements because like, whatever story is in the past like whatever story exists people will build on it and people will create more stories with it like even in conan the barbarian um the girl that he's with in the movie that arnold schwarzenegger's with she basically turns into a valkyrie sort of like character and they don't say that she turns into a valkyrie in the movie but when she reappears in spirit form to help him fight you know the, his enemies um, she looks like sort of like a Valkyrie because Valkyries, she's wearing like a Valkyrie like armor and she's got like a Valkyrie like sword and she's got this helmet with like two wings on both sides. And I do believe that Valkyries did wear that kind of clothing. So she was, they kind of hinted that she became a Valkyrie. And a lot of modern mythology is either, you know, it's, it's not even taken, it's basically taken from Norse. It's basically taken from Vikings. Anything with runes um, is a Viking is a Viking thing. Like the rune swords, there's lots of rune swords and rune staves, staves. Like for example, um, rune swords that like the whole Michael Moorcock pantheon, all, all of his characters. So a lot of his characters had these um, rune swords, rune staves. Um, I do think that um, even uh, a few of the 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 butcher. Um, stories where like the Dresden files he had a rune staff a staff and there would be like on the cover of the book was Harry Dresden holding the staff with these runes on it and you know the fact that runes are magic came from not just like Viking mythology but Viking folklore and Viking beliefs and even Medusa is not so much a mythological creature as she is a folklore creature and the thing is that mythology and folklore, they basically are almost the same thing because people believe in mythology stories as much as they believe in folklore stories. Like you could say um, that there's, that maybe um, Hercules or any of those Zeus or any of those gods um, were mythological, but you can also say fairies and fays were folklore, right? So. Baba Yaga's hut, that's a folklore story. All, all of these, like, there's a lot of different mm, things in folklore that blur, where uh, fairies or um, even like fairy tales are basically folklore. Like the Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, the Narnia stories, uh, where kids, with it, the children went through, the, through that door and went to another world. That's like a folklore story. And you can even um, use stories that were modern and put that in there like the Alice in Wonderland story that's a fantasy story right but it's it's got a lot of folklore elements even though it's a pretty original story 
where it does not really as much based on history, but it does have like weird connections to weird concepts like, you know, like evil queens and whatever, like people becoming really big or really small or stuff like that. But um, a lot of the stuff, it, it comes from, from folklore and it comes from mythology. And so like, um, so Hollywood has been like doing this and honestly, it works really, really well. I, I don't remember seeing a mythology story based on mythology that it really didn't like. They seem to do these really well. And I think it's just because these stories have been around for so long that when they do a movie about it, it's like, it's sometimes like your first experience with that story. You know, I didn't read the Perseus story, I but I did see Clash of the Titans. You know, I didn't read a lot of the, um, you know, Alibaba stories and whatever. The, the, the I didn't read a lot of the, um, the magic lamp stories with the with the genie and the magic lamp. Never read those stories, but I did see the movies, you know, as a kid. And you know, they even have like stories that, that came out with uh, Ray Harryhausen doing the effects. And I do think that one of the real reasons why they became so popular and so good was Harryhausen's effects. His little models and his little like the artwork that he did uh, in these movies really was compelling. He did the he created the Cyclops, he created Medu the Medusa, they created all the demons, he created like all of the, all, you know, there's a lot of um, amazing, amazing monsters, like the dragons and the monsters um, that he put together like out of clay and he did stop motion, stop motion animation with that, which is like you would take a picture and then you'd move the model a little bit, like the little figure, the little clay figure, you'd move it a little bit, take another picture and then you would do this a thousand times and out and it would make a thousand little movements and it would look like a movement it would look like the model is moving around and stuff like that so yeah so, th so that's pretty cool and i do think it's the effects uh and harryhausen that really compels people's imagination because these um these mythological stories they're best told in movie form they're cinematic they're interesting they're heroic, you know, there's monsters, there's heroes, there's battles, like you can hear the story, you can hear people talking about the story, like you can even read it in a book, but I've read mythology stories. And you know what? The movie's better, you know, because the, it's all about the action in mythology stories. It's all about the adventure, you know, to take it and make it cinematic and make it like, to not just say, oh, the, the hero was, was sailing on a giant ship. But to actually like like build a giant ship so people can sail on it, so they could take a, you know, make a movie and take video of it and, and take like photos of it, and then you know, or actually like, it's one thing when it's when they're describing the battle between like a monster and a hero or someone um, who is you know the, the hero of the story and whatever. It's one thing when you read it, but when you see it with with people enact reenacting it it's a lot better. And I do think that they use these, they, before movies, they, they did plays with this. You know, they would take mythology and they would make plays out of it and people would act and that would be the thing. And that's cool because they'd be action, sword fights, uh, they'd be people dressed as monsters, that, that's cool. But I think when you actually put this together and the proof, of Cla the proof is Clash of the Titans, you know, that was, they did change it a lot. They changed it a lot, but they took all the elements, they put it together, and the feeling was the same. Like, the elements was the same. You would see Zeus on Mount Olympus and all of the gods and goddesses, you know, talking about how should they handle this problem that's going on. Some some goddess is pissed off or whatever, and uh, she's, uh, you know, sending a big, uh, like, Leviathan freaking monster to destroy a city. You know, how should we handle that? You know, we're going to get Perseus and he's going to destroy this monster and whatever. You know, but when in movie form, it's amazing because you get good actors who, who take the role seriously. You get good effects. Like now they can do anything they want with effects because they, it's all computerized. But back in the day, you know, they had to build models and they had to like have a lot of makeup for people playing monsters or demons or whatever. And, um, these stories, and, and the reason they're so successful as movies, 
and even like the Marvel films, you know, where, with, with uh, four and all those Marvel films, and even like, you know, the Amazon film, like, like even like the Wonder Woman film, it's like where she's an Amazon. It's like, that's, t that's kind of like mythology and folklore, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know if there's a myth about, I mean, it is kind of like a myth, like the whole idea of that, you know, her people, the female warriors, you know, the Amazons existed ever, uh, was a myth. It's like a folklore. People tell these stories to each other over time and it's, the story just continues. It's not like somebody wrote a book about it. It's like people have been telling these stories to each other before writing existed. People would just tell these stories and they would tell, tell these stories so many times that people would just memorize these stories. They would remember these stories and they would tell it to further generations. Basically, you know, you would hear it, you would tell it to your kids, you know? You would hear it when you're a kid and you would tell it to your kids and they would tell it to their kids and you would hear it from, you know, you would hear these stories from, you know, the, the people in the village, the, the elders or the, the more like grown up people in the village, whatever. And so, and these stories would just be uh, so compelling. And the thing is, what's interesting about mythology is it turns, like we don't know what the original mythology was unless it's written down, you know, because when things are told from generation to generation, things change a lot, but the basic idea is probably the same. And the whole point of it is people, tr the good triumphing over evil, people triumphing over monsters, the, you know, heroes saving the city, uh, all, all this kind of stuff, which we still do. Like the modern superhero is based on uh, the ancient hero in the mythology story, you know, cause they're mythological. Like all of these modern heroes, they're, they're superheroes. They're, they're like, they're people, but they have powers and they use it for good. Like they're not like there's villains and stuff like that. They're demons, there's monsters, you know, but they're using it for good to destroy evil. And as long as I think we have good against evil stories, where people side on the side of good rather than the side of evil, I think the world is a better place because of it. And I honestly do. I think these stories where good triumphs over evil because it's the right thing to do, makes the world a better place. It, it creates morals in people and it creates, you know, kids that are not easily corrupted and kids that think I'm gonna do the right thing because my hero, whatever hero that is, maybe from a story or from a book or from a movie or whatever, they did the right thing. They do the right thing. They're they're fighting for good and the and right and what's right and against evil and, and, and corruption and what's wrong, you know? And so um, that's why I think these stories work so well because these myths, they will always be around and it's just, movies are just the modern way to tell these myths. You know, movies are just how we now tell these myths to other people. Because it started with, it started with just, you know, people talking to each other, then people started writing it down, and then people started like, playing it and you know on with plays and theater you know when there was theater there's been theater for thousands of years people would like play out stories and stuff like that and have costumes and dress like all kinds of characters and creatures and people and whatever um there was theater and now there's movies you know and now it's like that's the new way of telling the story and these stories work so well with movies because there's so much supernatural in it, there's so many monsters, they're not just bad monsters, there's like cool creatures too. There's like unicorns and pegasi, you know? And um, and that's what like Clash of the Titans has. It's got like, not just the demons, but it's got the cool, the good, you know, creatures, the little metallic owl that like flaps around and stuff like, and helps the hero like in, on his journey and stuff like that. So I just think that like the reason that it's just natural, it's a natural progression. I think it's a good thing. It's not just like, oh, they're trying to make a movie but they don't know what to make it about. That's partly it. They don't know what to make it about. But here's this myth mythology, mythological story that's already there, it's already written, it's got already fans, people already know the story, people heard of it when they were kids and they will definitely go to see it in the theater or on DVD or streaming or whatever it is on Netflix or whatever, or on YouTube or wherever it is that they're, that they're watching um, because people want to experience these stories. These stories are so good that they've been told over and over, back and forth for thousands of years. And they're still good. And people still like them and people still tell them and people still talk about them. But 
movies are like, and comic books also, because like, that's another thing that where, where these stories just took off in comic book form. There's a lot of great comic books with, with, with mythology and like all, I think all superheroes are basically, they stem from mythology. They're like, they're, they're what Hercules was, mythology. Gilgamesh is a, you know, you, you could say he's a person with, with superpowers, you know, he's a superhero of some sort. And they're always trying to do the right thing, which is also the whole point of a lot of moral morality that these ancient stories had. It was just like giving people the message where right over wrong is is, is right, you know, <laughs> you know. And so, um, and so that's why I think they work so well, and I think that's why the rise of uh, mythological stories is so prevalent. And I think the, they they work so well in 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 theater form. I would love to see more of these i would love to see more um because there's a lot of they did a lot of greek stuff you know i've seen a lot of greek myth and whatever and roman myth but i really want to see more not just thor but i want to see a more um you know norse mythology and more viking mythologies there's tons of cool viking stories that are just waiting to be a cool movie or someone to adapt it or or take some of that story and put it into a movie and maybe change it around or maybe put their own story into it or whatever, or just tell it the way it is. You know, there's lots of really, really cool stories. And some of these stories are hard to read because they're in, they're in ancient Norse and they haven't been translated, but what they are translated, but they're kind of like, they're kind of like poems and they're hard to read, even though they are translated, but to take it and to do a movie script on it and to put all the special effects you know, so you're not just reading, oh, this happened and this magic happened and this this god or did this thing and this goddess did this thing, you know, oh, where this monster was like fighting with this other being or whatever it is, you know, this, this hero was fighting with this monster. You actually want to see it. You want to see the whole fight like on, on the screen, you know, cinematically with like music and special effects, you know, and they, they, it works really, really well with special effects and stuff like that, you know. And so it's just like these, these, these stories are just, they're, they're perfect for, for movies. They're just, they're dying to be told because they're, they're meant to be cinematic and they're, they're, they're over the top and they were the movies of the past before movies existed. They were what people entertain themselves with, just telling stories to each other, you know? And so, um, and so, yeah, so yeah, I, I do think that these movies are really good and I and I like that they're they're taking the, these stories and changing them into movies because these stories work and it's nice to see you know uh, it's really hard to like go and read an actual myth uh, actual mythology because it's written by people that are you know writing it and translating it and whatever into in their own way but when you do a movie out of it and it's a lot of action and and, and all kinds of scenes and stuff like that then it becomes a really really cool movie and, and then it becomes something that's compelling and it also gets people to like put in you know get an interest in mythology and, and and read more of these stories and like experience more of these stories and make more of these stories for people to see so yeah so thanks for watching uh, i hope you guys like the video uh let me know what you're thinking in the comments like and subscribe like to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want and i will see you guys in another video later